So today the tutorial is going to be about how I made this weapon that I am using for my hot girl cosplay. So price wise for this thing, for the styrofoam bowl base I used here, this is a wooden rod and it's got a lot of foam pieces on it to cover it and make it thicker. That was probably all around 15 bucks. This is covered in warbler, these are made from warbler and then this is actually just foam not even covered and these are warbler scales and the details are warbler. For all of this, I would say you would probably need this small warbler sheet, which is 14 by 19. I buy the jumbo, the biggest size, and just cut it up and use it as I need it. So I'm going to guess you're going to need a small one to make something about like this. And then when I add up all of the time that I used to spend on this, I did this in 16 and a half hours over the course of like a week, two weeks, other than that. Let's move on to how I made it. First up, I'm just dividing the styrofoam ball up with some lines, dividing it into quarters lengthwise, and then again going around it, just so I can better visualize where I'm gonna put the spikes later. Then using the X-Acto knife, I'm just cutting a small hole into the edge where I'm gonna stick the wooden rod for the handle. To create the pattern for the warble pieces that is going over the styrofoam ball, I just laid a piece of paper over it and just traced over the lines that I previously made. And then cutting that shape into the warble, I'm going to be using eight of these little triangles to cover the styrofoam ball. So four on the top that go halfway down and then four on the bottom that meet along the edge line. And to attach them, I just heat up the warble and lay it over the styrofoam ball. Now because it is round, my pattern is not perfect and I do have to go around and trim the edges. To do this, I just reheat up the warbler and take in my tin sneers and just keep trimming it and keep pushing it together until it is smooth. Just be very careful not to get your heat gun too close to the styrofoam because it melts very, very easily. And then if you end up with some uneven surfaces where the warbler doesn't quite meet, don't worry, just reheat it up with the heat gun, and then I use a pen or a marker, something smooth, and just roll over it so it smooths out and it's a very nice, solid, round ball. Then to create the spikes, I first made the shape out of foam and then covered it in warbler, leaving a little extra up at the top. Heat that back up and fold it over the edge of the cone. And it's this warble at the edge of the cone that's going to make it stick to the main part of the mace. So go ahead and make sure both of them are very tacky and then just stick it right on to the place you think it needs to be. Then to add the handle, all I did was add a ton of hot glue into the hole I previously cut for it and stick it right in. And after that, the base of the mace is complete. Now it's just up to you to decorate it how you wish. So for me, I decided to add some little bit of shape to the handle of the mace so it's not just all round. I cut these half inch strips of foam and I'm just hot gluing them over the circle to give it more of like an octagonal shape. Then to cover up all the gaps between the foam edges, I'm just using wall putty and an X-Acto knife and smoothing it over all of the edges. And here's what the wall putty looks like after I've applied it. Once it's dried completely, make sure you sand it until it's very smooth. Onto the lower handle of the mace, this is the section that I'm actually going to be using as the grip. So to make it really fatty, I actually hot glued like two or three layers of foam to make it a little bit more bulkier than the top section. I applied warble over that just to make sure this section was really strong because this is where I'm going to be holding the mace. I also ended up using a bunch of the warble scraps to make the edges for the handle and just keep adding decorations. Cut the handle to your desired length, and then I decided to add this leather strap to the bottom, which I just inserted with a simple screw through the wooden dowel. Back on to decorating. So I'm just using actually a puff fabric paint to paint these little swirl designs on the handle of the mace. And moving back down to the grip, I want it to be just super detailed and cool, so I cut out all these little fish scale pieces of warbla, heated them up, and stuck it around the grip section. And then moving back to the top section, I used additional warbla tubing to just kind of push around sections of the little thorns, and I kind of did this in the design of the Injustice Mace from the video game. And then using some super glue, I took these little pearl things that I got out of the scrapbook section at my hobby store. I just kind of glued them all around the mace to give it an awesome just little 3D effect. 
And then because I didn't have enough small little pearls, I just used more fabric paint to create these little knob sections on the warbler. Now this time around, instead of using a spray primer or gesso, I decided to try wood glue to prime the warbler. And just using a big old fat paintbrush, I went over all the warbler sections, even the foam sections and the fabric paint, I just covered the whole thing in wood glue. And after it was all finished, I actually really preferred the wood glue to gesso or spray primer because it was so thick, I didn't have to end up sanding it at all. So because I didn't have to sand, I went right into paint. And for this section of the handle, I actually decided to do an additive technique. So I painted the whole thing black first for the shadows. And then I used a gold rub and buff and just used my finger and spread it on on top of the black. So using this technique, I got a really cool faded aged look without having to actually go back over it with darker colors and age it. And then for the top of the mace and as well as the grip, I used a textured bronze spray paint to give it the look of metal. And continued using the puffy paint to create more designs on the sphere. Moving on, I'm starting to age the handle of the mace. So just using a black acrylic paint and a really small brush, I'm just adding paint to the small crevices as well as around the edges. Pretty much anywhere you think that this weapon would get dirty, you need to add some black paint. Then to age the top of the mace, I'm starting with a dark goldish brown first, going through all the crevices, and then adding a black on top of that. Then to add even more definition and contrast, I'm adding just a pure white acrylic paint over the places that I want to pop out. So especially those small little details I drew with the puffy paint, and anywhere else I think that light will catch. I also decided to add a little bit of color, just the gold and the bronze wasn't too exciting for me. So I'm adding red to these little circle things that cover the thorns, and I actually added some green to the scales on the handle. And again, I'm going back in with more white paint just to make certain areas pop out. I'm also adding it to the top of the spikes, as you can see, just where I think it would get a lot of wear, so the color would be faded. And remember, you don't need the black or the white aging to be everywhere. You just need it in certain spots to make it pop. And we're done. I really, really like the way it came out. I like all the details, especially this. Even though it's not even warble, it's just foam. I really like how this looked. And in case you were wondering, my inspiration for this was actually Sauron's mace in the Return of the King film. I based this part and this part off of that, and then I went with the more classic nature up front to make it look like the mace hot girl uses. That's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or message me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and favorite so you can have more cosplay and cosplay videos. And That's it. Good luck and have fun in all your other cosplays.